This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the founder of Save Canadian Mining, Mr. Terry Lynch. Terry, how are you today? Gerardo, I'm great today. Great to great to catch up again. We spoke a few months ago when you launched this initiative, and for those that aren't familiar, I would love for you to provide a brief overview of what the mission of Save Canadian Mining is, and then I want to talk about the progress because it's been pretty substantial. You've had um, some big names, a lot of support, and, and rubber is hitting the road, frankly, so I want to talk about that. But again, for those not familiar, what is Save Canadian Mining? Yeah, Gerardo, let, let's start at the basics. I mean, basically, the, the fundamental thesis is that, is that, you know, the junior mining market, uh, you know, stocks have been decimated uh, in these last several years. And uh, uh, the, our, our view is, and it's backed by solid research, is that this is not a, uh, you know, reflection on the companies themselves, per se. It's really a structural problem. So our view is, is that... Uh, in uh, October 2012, they changed uh, a securities rule that had been in place for 142 years in Canada. And it, it basically, this rule was called the tick test. And the idea was you basically, you could only short a stock if the previous tick uh, uh, was, was, was up. In other, in, in other words, you couldn't short a stock on the down tick. Sure. And this was a sort of a fundamental thesis that was in place, not, not just in Canada, but uh, pretty much Australia, Europe, uh, United States. And, and, but then when they allowed algorithmic trading, they, they, they got rid of this rule. It was an inadvertent rule change. They didn't, they didn't know how to sort of have a consolidated tape at the time. Hmm. And so they couldn't figure out how to sort of technologically keep it uh, together. So they basically said, oh, you know, we've got this uh, study from Harvard that says uh, short selling doesn't impact these markets in, in any event, and, and we're okay. Well, that turns out <laughs> to be complete crap, to be honest with you. And so we, we just released uh, yesterday a uh, fairly significant research piece that we had uh, done with uh, uh, a company called Murenbield. Murenbield is fairly prominent, uh, mostly, I guess, in the gold space, uh, but a very uh, high-end, sophisticated research house. It's been around for a long time, and uh, you know they're, they're very well respected. So we, had, we commissioned them to do some research for us to sort of you know, prove this up uh, so it wasn't just uh, Terry and a a gaggle of, uh, of cheerleaders. <laughs> so we, we, we basically looked at the data and, and the data is, is compelling. I'll leave you with this one um, visual for the read, you know, the listeners and to, to get and is that the day this rule change came into play, call that day one, well, the stock market index was a hundred and, and the commodity index was a hundred. Now today uh, in February of this year, the, the commodity index is down to uh, down 7%. So it's off. It's off a little bit. Uh, you know the commodity index or it's down seven percent. The stock index down sixty five percent. Right. So think of that, just crazy. So the stock index is sixty five percent less. You know, and it's trading. Uh, it it's never been this deep before. And uh, historically, typically the stock index is slightly above uh, to a little bit more than above uh, the commodity index. So so what we have here is a structural problem, not a mining specific problem. So. We need to fix the structure first to really repair the damage to our industry. And that's really what safe things mining is trying to do is trying to expose this problem to the government to say, hey, guys, uh, this isn't something that you caused. It isn't something that you sought out to, to do, but this has been the result. So we're, we've lost a ton of investment in mining. We're losing mining jobs all over the place. We're it's particularly impactful on our you know, re remote communities where a lot of the mining takes place. And, uh, you know, this is a, a, an opportunity for us to, to right this wrong and, and let's get to it. So that's basically what Save Canadian Mining is all about. Let me read off some of the main points from the research piece. As as of January 2020, as of last month, there was a 60% gap between the Metals and Minerals Index and the TSX Venture Exchange. That represents the largest gap in at least 12 years. Here's another one. Since October of 2012, when the tick test was removed, there has been a decrease, obviously, in issuers listing on the TSX and TSX Venture Exchange. The number of mining companies listing on each recently reached its lowest number in 10 years. 
Equity capital raised by junior mining companies on the TSX Venture Exchange is a fraction of what was raised prior to 2012 during the recession of 2008-2009. Equity raised by junior mining companies on the TSX Venture Exchange averaged $2.9 billion, which represents 42% more than equity raised by the same sector in 2019. And lastly, between 2011 In 2018, there was a 62.5% drop in spending on local economic activity in Canada by by Canadian mining companies. Now, I'll play devil's advocate a bit and say that there's been less issuers because there was a misallocation, a large misallocation of capital during the last bull market. I think we could both agree that's probably true, but I don't believe that comes anywhere near explaining the divergence in capital raised and issuers um, during you know the recession of 2008, 2009, and what was raised by this sector in 2019, where things were relatively healthy, right? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think you know that, that you know you hit it on the nail on the head. I mean that you know the the commodity decline is probably reversed and and trending uh, north. Uh, where we're trying to to get into a, a better commodity cycle, uh, and typically this is when the the, the uh, equity raises start to pick up and people start to invest. But that hasn't happened this time, and and you know I think that the reason that is before us it's it's basically a structural reason. It's like you know uh, it's super difficult to motivate investors to invest into this wall of selling with every if you have a good you know, short of having spectacular, like great bear like discoveries, even like really good news doesn't get rewarded. So it's tough to, uh, to get investors motivated in, in these circumstances. But uh, I think uh, the good news is, uh, in my view, that the, the governments recognize this is a is a problem. And I think there's going to be a, a, a serious move to address it. So Let's talk about that. I know that you're having high level behind the scenes discussions. I know a lot of those are confidential, but I would love for you to provide some context, Terry, as to what you're hoping to accomplish. Let's not get into, you, you know, promises or, or pie in yeah, the sky of things. Course, of course. Let's talk about yeah, what so, you're I mean, hoping to do. Yeah. So so the first thing we wanted to do was to make sure they understood the issue. So we've, we've been able to... and. And, and we've focused because obviously we're a volunteer organization and, you know, nobody's getting paid to do this. We're, it's all been done by, you know, sort of uh, everyone supporting their time and money in to help us move forward. Uh, so so we've been focusing in on Ontario uh, to the most part. The reason why is in, in Canada, uh, Ontario is obviously the biggest province, most populous province, and it so it has the most impact. So if you're trying to do something nationally, if you don't get Ontario, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to succeed. Sure. So you, if you, you got to get Ontario, then of course you have to get the other provinces on side. But generally speaking, in this sector, uh, the security sector, because uh, the Ontario uh, uh, province manages the Toronto uh, Stock Exchange and, and the uh, Canadian uh, Stock Exchange, uh, the two biggest exchanges in the country by far, uh, it, Ontario has like a disproportionate role. So you got to get them. So so our focus was you know, from an economic efficiency perspective, lobby the Ontario government to make sure that they understood the problem and the opportunity. So I can say that that we've been very successful in getting audiences with the government at senior levels, at ministerial levels of the, you know, Minister of Small Business, Minister of Mines, Minister of Finance, speaking to them and, and making them aware of the problem. So I would say the government is now fully aware of the of the issue. And, and they're, you know, they're quite concerned uh, about it. Hadn't, hadn't really, wasn't something that they had, uh, had, uh, you know, seen before. And now they realize, wow, this is a, a big issue. And so now, you know, it's going through the process as, as, as things do with government uh, uh, deliberations as to, you know, how do you solve it? So, so I think that's where we're at now. So we're, you know, we're working with the government to uh, work with within their system and structure and timing to find an appropriate way to solve the problem. And uh, so I feel super encouraged, you know, personally as an investor that this is going to come to fruition. I, I don't see it as a an if thing anymore. I see it as a win. Uh, you know, will it happen <clears throat> earliest could be sort of fall of uh, this year and, and probably latest is, uh, you know, sort of spring, summer of uh, 2021. But I, I believe this will change and, and this will have a phenomenal impact, I believe, uh, on junior money. 
I think there's two points worth making, and correct me if I'm wrong, Terry, but the w- the first one is, obviously, this has an economic impact in the hundreds of millions of dollars, both directly and indirectly, right? And then the second one is, you're not going to the government and asking for tax breaks. You're not going for them to, to them and saying, you know, we, we want you to subsidize um, this in any way. All you're asking for is a reinstatement of something that was the norm for over a century, correct? Yeah, and that's that's the really amazing thing. I mean, it's, it, it, the the government, you know, guys jokingly say, "Well, you're you're, you're like the first guy here that's not asking for uh, money from us." You know? So I'm saying, guys, I want to give you money because I tell you, if we can get these rule changes, investors will come back because there'll be a once in a lifetime opportunity. In addition to obviously the the commodity cycle turn to get in on these super bargain deals across the board and 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 ride the revival. So. So investment will happen, and, and uh, I think government recognizes that uh, that would be a good thing, uh, you know, for the economy uh, uh, in Ontario and and uh, across the country. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I think they'll uh, they'll find their way through to uh, supporting this. Well, good work, Terry. I know both myself and Nick Hodge, uh, we co-own Resource Stock Digest. We're happy to support the movement. You have incredible support, and that includes the Ontario Mining Association, the Ontario Prospectors Association, Sprott Mining's involved, McEwen Mining's involved, Osisco Mining's involved, the TSX Vecture, Venture Exchange, and I know there's several other uh, junior mining companies and individuals that have been extremely supportive, but you know, a credit to you and your team for kind of leading the charge and... Um, Fingers crossed, because I think this can have a significant effect on 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 trading here and, and and speculating. And, you know, what frankly is one of the highest risk, highest reward sectors as is. Right. But this can help yep. level the playing field. And I think it's important. Anything else you'd like to add, Terry? Yeah. You know what? I, I would say, you know, to your listeners, if, and if, you're, if you're a junior mining investor, uh, you know, by all means, please come by SaveCanadianMining.com uh, and, and, and sign in. Show your support by by registering. If you're a junior mining company, you know, uh, sign in and show your support and, and consider donating to the cause because obviously while we're not paying, you know, Terry or, or any of his friends, you know, lobbyists and agencies and stuff that are keeping this sort of front of front of the press and in and, and front of the government mind, they do cost money. Not a lot, but, you know, we do need uh, to continue to sort of uh, press the case probably for the next, uh, you know, uh, eight to 12 months to make sure we get this across the finish line because, uh, like I've been saying to the, you know, the, the people that have joined us, you know, the Eric Sprots and these, the, you know, Sean Rusin, you know, the, you know, Rob McEwen, these types of people, they get it because they recognize, well, they've got huge investments in junior mining. And, and obviously this will be a, you know, a, a total game changer. So it's, it's, it's the best IR these companies could spend is to get behind safe Canadian mining. Cause it, it's the reason why it's going to be different this time, Gerardo, hmm. because I've, I've, I'm out there. I have, I'm obviously a junior mining company. People say, well, why should I invest now? Why is it going to be different this time? That's the question we all get. And you know what? It's a tough one. If you, if you can't sort of speak to something structural like this, because sure. you know what, uh, up until the, you know, the last several years, you know, we keep looking for sunshine, uh, you know, out at the end of this cave we're in, and quite often it's the train that's running us over, you know. So, but this time I really feel it is different, and that's a great message to take to our investors because you know God knows they've suffered enough, and, and now it's a chance to get some retribution to uh, to get back in there and and I think uh, make some of their money back and then some. Well said, Terry. Thank you so much for your time, and I can't wait to have you back to to get further updates. Thank you. All right, thanks, Gerardo. Cheers, man. Bye. Cheers.